very good morning very good morning good morning to you all sir the time we have to on the video can you shorten it sir we'll we'll discuss that later once the today's class is over then we'll discuss i'll give time to discuss about it Thank already it has it has made a call and uh, the today's presentation is over i'll uh, give a time to discuss about it and uh, for today's class i request some people to unmute your mic from ananda krishnan from ananda krishnan to uh, 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 av shrirish bob you please unmute uh, your mic and please, please join with us till the end anil kumar anjaniya singh uh, anurag dash anurag uh, janjir and arvind roshan ashish kumar shri vastava ashwatram and bob you please unmute the mic please join with us till the end and and what we we have seen yesterday we have seen uh, we have concluded the uh, robot kinematics uh, yesterday and um, uh, yesterday was a very poor uh, presentation when i am revisiting the uh, video contents uh, which i have uh, disseminated uh, to you through uh, the group which i have presented yesterday was very poor even after uh, it may happen sometime even after a long preparation also um, uh, it won't be feasible to convert the thoughts into words the, the, there are uh, many flaws occurs during yesterday presentation and uh, there is a lagging with the uh, conversion uh, i am uh, struggle to convert the things which i have been uh, in the mind uh, it is very hard to convert the uh, things which i have uh, in mind into words and uh, i think it won't be uh, happen in your future and uh, concerning the today's lecture and uh, concerning the uh, today we will start uh, the uh, sensors and transducers and in particular sensors in robots and that is what our uh, today's topic from uh, today's onwards we will uh, visit uh, the sensors and its classifications and the working principle how it can be used in robots that is what we are going to discuss and uh, yeah, there are there are some portions left uh, uh, in robot kinematics that uh, we will discuss later uh, and uh, concerning the sensors and uh, transducers and uh, i think no one joined you please unmute your mic please join with us the 10 people please join with us anand anand krishnan anand krishnan please unmute your mic anand krishnan number uh, 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 and 18 <coughs> from 9 to 18 please join with us and i think uh, ashwatram is also available ashwatram shri vastava ashish kumar arvind roshan you please uh, unmute your mic uh, and please join with us <coughs> yes <coughs> my slides are visible yes sir yes yes then sensors and transducers sensors sensor uh, used to measure the physical changes that occurs in the surroundings like like temperature uh, light and and so on uh, it converts into a readable signals and before that what we need to know uh, we need to know about the transducers usually transducers are called as sensors are called as transducers and uh, yeah trans it has a minor difference minor transducer is a device that that is used to convert a non electrical signals into an electrical signals here what we have given in this particular uh, slide that is transducer device that converts one form of energy into an another another form of energy and concerning the sensors and it is a device when exposed to the physical phenomena and produces a proportional output signals and that is what uh, we are going to have a visit over these presentations and that is what about sensors and transducers is used to convert the non electrical signals into an electrical signals and uh, the sensors and which is used to measure the physical change that happens in the surroundings and it converts into a readable signals and uh, the measuring parameters which we here we have shown as in displacement temperature pressure light and etc and it can be converted into an voltage current or capacitance 
and uh, the common conversion is uh, to electrical voltage and uh, the reason for making the conversion is that uh, the converted signal is more more convenient uh, uh, to be used with the computers and uh, uh, the concerning the uh, uh, sensors uh, it is used to make a measurement of a physical variable and uh, the common sensors and transducers uh, which include the same strain, strain gauge thermocouples speedometers and pitot tubes and uh, usually it is uh, based on the, uh, uh, the the classifications may be uh, many more and in particular that are classified into analog transducers and digital transducers and uh, we will discuss the analog, analog and uh, digital uh, little later and uh, the displacing uh, sensors and which is used to measure the movement of an object or is called displacement sen sensors and uh, in order to find the position uh, position of the uh, object a sensor is used that is called position sensors and in order to find the uh, the presence of uh, the objects without any physical contact that is called uh, the proximity sensors and uh, the uh, position sensors are widely classified into potentiometers the lvdt and the strain gauge capacity sensors encoders hall effect sensors and inductive sensors i think you may be uh, aware about uh, the term lvdt what might be lvdt what was the abbreviation of lvdt linear variable differential transducer i will come back to you and uh, i will discuss more about uh, about it later and uh, and then uh, we'll we'll start uh, these sensors there are there are uh, plenty of sensors are available that that is uh, we are going to discuss about uh, inductive uh, inductive sensors capacitive uh, inductive proximity sensors capacitive proximity sensors and uh, uh, photoelectric pro proximity sensors these are the things we are going to cover during uh, the uh, head called sensors and uh, further we will discuss about uh, the hall effect and the how uh, the hall effect sensors will work and the construction of uh, lvdt electric LV, lvdt and the uh, uh, how how wh what are the eddy current sensors how we uh, we can use these sensors with our robotics and that is what we are going to visit over uh, the topic called uh, sensors and uh, uh, in in a uh, different dimensions uh, a sensor is a transducer uh, used to make a measurement of the physical variable. The basic function of an electric sen sensor uh, is to measure some features uh, of the world such as light, sound or pressure and convert that measurement into an electrical signal, uh, usually a voltage or current and that is what uh, the sensors and uh, the characteristics of a uh, sensing device should be it should have a, a wide range and it should it should respond immediately and it should be accurate uh, the sensitivity should be more and it should be uh, the linearity should be uh, wide and uh, this was the characteristics of the sensing device there are there are there are plenty of informations are available under uh, the characteristics of sensing device that is number one is range uh, the number two is response, accuracy, sensitivity, and linearity. Concerning the range, uh, it refers to, uh, uh, to the minimum and the maximum change in input input signals to which the sensors can can respond. Respond. The sensor should have wide operating range. And number two is response. Uh, the resp response should be instantaneous, and uh, the the capable it should be capable of responding the change. In, uh, in the sensed variable in a minimum time and uh, concerning the accuracy the third one is the third characteristics of sensing devices accuracy the measurement accuracy should be uh, as high as possible the sensors output should properly reflect the in, uh, in, uh, input quantity which is being measured or sensed and concerning the sensitivity, sensitivity the sensitivity relates to the change in the output uh, exhibited by the sensors for the change in the input and it should it should be as as high as possible and uh, linearity the sense uh, the device should exhibit the uh, same sensitivity over the entire operating range uh, when uh, sensing uh, with uh, uh, the uh, first uh, 10 minutes 
uh, uh, say uh, the measuring amount should be 100 and it should be um, 100 for the entire span entire operating range uh, till r1 r or it might might be a two hours or it might be an eight hours the it, it should have the linearity with the uh, sense, uh, sensing device and uh, it should be suitable for environment and uh, it should have the physical size and the cost and the operation should be uh, easy and uh, it should not uh, disturb or have any effect upon the quantity it sends it should not affect the uh, the sense uh, the device which is measured by the sensors and it include isolation from uh, receiving excess signals or electrical noise that could uh, give rise to the possibility of uh, the misoperation or damage of sensors uh, or circuit or error system. Therefore, the characteristic, the characteristic of, of uh, sensing device should be uh, wide that should be uh, uh, very important when we are dealing with the uh, sensors and the various uh, types or various class classifications or classifications of sensors are available and one uh, classification is one peculiar typical uh, classification is internal state sensors and external external state sensors and uh, the internal state sensors are classified into potentiometers synchronous resolvers linear inductive scales uh, differential transformers like LVDT, RVDT and optical interrupters and optical encoders. We have a tachometer and accelerometers. And concerning the external uh, state sensors, stain cage, pressure transducers, proximity devices, ultrasonic uh, sensors and electromagnetic sensors. And uh, uh, even it may be classified into uh, tactile sen sensors and non-tactile -tact -tact sensors. Uh, we will end uh, at first we will enter into the various uh, classification and uh, um, we will discuss more about these uh, tactile sen sensors and talk uh, non tactile little later and uh, uh, this is what uh, the about the potentiometers and it works on the principle principle of change of resistance of the wire with its length a potentiometer uh, is a simplest device that can be used to measure the position. Here, uh, the, uh, the, uh, it is an analog device whose uh, output voltage is proportionally the portion uh, of a, the wiper. We have wiper based on the wiper portion. It, uh, uh, it gets the uh, amount of uh, uh, variations and uh, we have the analog uh, uh, output and the potentiometer uh, maybe either of uh, an, uh, angular or linear type and we will uh, visit uh, one uh, video related to potentiometer and then we will come back to the slides. Check with audio. The potentiometer is an instrument. Whether it is audible? The system audio yes, is sir. clear? Yes, it's audible. It's audible. Audible. It's audible. Yes, yes, yes used for the measurement of potential difference. It consists of a 10 meter long uniform wire of manganin or constantin stretched in 10 segments, each of 1 meter length. The segments are stretched parallel to each other on a horizontal wooden board. The ends of the wire are fixed to copper strips with binding screws. A metal scale is fixed on the board parallel to the wire. Electrical contact with the wires is established by pressing the jockey J. Principle of potentiometer. A battery BT is connected between the ends A and B of the potentiometer wire through a key K. A steady current I flows through the potentiometer wire. This forms the primary circuit. A primary cell is connected in the primary circuit consisting of key and battery alone. Is it so? Series with the positive terminal A of the potentiometer, a galvanometer, high resistance 
and jockey. This forms the secondary circuit. If the potential difference between A and J is equal to the EMF of the cell, no current flows through the galvanometer. It shows zero deflection. AJ is called the balancing length. If the balancing length is L, the potential difference across AJ is equal to IR into L, where R is the resistance per unit of the potentiometer wire and I the current in the primary circuit. See here, see here, AJ is equal to I or L. AJ is the length and which makes the put, uh, zero uh, and I is the current or I am again, uh, again watch the video. Is the resistance per unit of potential difference across AJ is equal to I R into L. Where R is the resistance per unit of the potentiometer wire and I the current in the primary circuit. Therefore, E is equal to I R into L. Since I and R are constants, E proportional to L. Hence, the EMF of the cell is directly proportional to its balancing length. This is the principle of a potentiometer. Is this is what about the very uh, very old uh, thing which we have used uh, for measuring the signals, and this is what about the potentiometer, and uh, uh, the potentiometer can be of either linear or angular type, and uh, it works on the principle of the mechanical displacement plane, the conversion conversion of mechanical displacement and electrical signals signals, and the senses as a resistive element and the sliding contact that is uh, we have wipers and based on the movement of the wiper we will get the according signals uh, attained and uh, we have see here we have shaft wiper and we have the circuit primary circuit and uh, it was connected with potentiometer and the object of whose displacement to be measured is connected to the slider by uh, the using a rotating shaft a moving rod and a cable that is kept stretched during operation. Here we have we have the uh, angular displacement and for linear displacement and uh, the resistive element uh, is a wire wound track or conductive uh, conductive plastic. The track comprises of large number of closely packed turns of the uh, resistive wire. The conductive plastic is made up of uh, plastic resin embedded with the carbon powder and uh, the potentiometer has here we have the sliding contact and uh, the resistive element during operation a voltage V is, uh, is applied across the resistive uh, element. A voltage divided circuit is formed when slider comes into contact with the wire. The output V A uh, uh, is uh, proportional to the displacement of the slider of the uh, wire. And uh, this is what the circuit diagram of basic slide wire potentiometer. And the application of a potentiometer, throttle position sensor is uh, used to measure the position of the throttle uh, butterfly value, um, uh, which is oriented so that the uh, you see how how much uh, air is flowing into the engine, and it is used to, uh, in audio control system to increase the uh, amplitude of sound, and uh, the application other applications, uh, the audio control as I discussed earlier, the audio control both linear. And roti potentiometers are used to control audio equipment for changing the loudness and the other audio related signals. And uh, uh, and even it can be uh, used in televisions for uh, uh, doing changes with the brightness and color and other contrast and all. And the motion controls uh, it can be used as a close control system, um, which is used to get the fee, uh, feedback uh, in the servo mechanism. And transducers it, it, it gives the large output signals. And it find uh, the application as a displacement. It can be used as in displacement transducers. And uh, the advantage and disadvantage of the potentiometer: uh, low cost, high amplitude, and easily available, and can be used for measuring even large measurement. The number of uh, 
operating cycles are limited that is what that is what the disadvantage and they are very easy to use with the, these potentiometer and uh, the, we uh, will visit uh, the linear variable differential transducers and uh, see uh, one particular uh, video about lvdt Yes, we will start from this this one. Eddy, hey guys. We are first we will see the eddy current sensors, and uh, and then we will move to uh, the LVDT. Welcome back to the channel. We know that a small change in the structure of a metal can fairly cause a huge loss. It is, it is audible. The eddy current sensors we sensor video video is audible. Audible, sir. Audible, sir. Audible. Yes, yes. These changes can be due to any reason and needs to be continuously monitored. Well, monitoring an equipment continuously could be a little too tedious and practically might sound impossible. But this has been made achievable by eddy current sensors. To monitor our machines continuously for unwanted expansions, we use eddy current sensors. These are small sensors that are used in our machines that continuously monitor any unwanted thermal expansions. Eddy current was discovered by Leon Foucault in 1855. To understand eddy current sensors, let's take a conductor. If we pass an alternating current through it, the conductor develops an alternating magnetic field around it. Now let's bring another conductive metal around the conductor. This metal now comes within the changing magnet. And when we are uh, discussing about the magnets and whether it might be a, a, a permanent or a temporary magnets, and assume uh, you are having a magnet uh, with a dimension of uh, 15, uh, uh, 150 mm. Uh, uh, and uh, like uh, which uh, uh, the, like your scales it uh, the, it has the same dimension and uh, we have uh, north and south pole and uh, if you are trying to cut the uh, uh, 15 uh, 15 uh, 150 mm into two pieces equal to pieces what will happen uh, what will happen in the uh, cut and portion What you uh, what you are doing uh, what you are doing you are uh, making uh, uh, a single piece in two. What it happens whether it is feasible to make a join with that of two uh, cutter portion whether it is feasible to again it can it can uh, be uh, a yeah, north north or it can be a part of north south. Uh, north can join it actually. Gauru, Gauru, go on. Yeah, north, south, yeah. sir. That will be north and south again. North and south. It is feasible to uh, join those uh, cutter portion. It can attract. It can attract. You are dividing mm -hmm. into two equal parts. The cutter portions can attract, or it can. It won't attract. It will triple, yes, sir. It triples. Yeah, I guess due to some polarity, north, south, no, north, south. No, it will attract, sir. No, I think you didn't uh, did that experiment. D during your childhood, uh, it, it may happen. You, you fell down uh, some uh, samples and uh, it broken. And what you usually you try to join those two uh, pieces. But what happens? It won't. Uh, it, it triples. It won't uh, attract. How how the polarity changes, and how we can view this 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 uh, uh, phenomena? What was the principle behind this happening? And think think over it. Think over it. When it feasible, uh, we'll discuss. When it feasible, we discuss. And uh, uh, do you have any idea with that uh, this information? And anyone anyone? I think no one. And and what what I I said you are trying to divide into two equal parts. But what I am uh, I am saying is try to uh, divide into more number of parts. Well, let, let it be might be a ten. You, you are trying to uh, you try to divide uh, the 150 mm into ten equal parts. What happens? And if you are trying to arrange in a uh, table, what happens? It triples each of this. Is it so? Think over it. Uh, uh, this we can correlate with the principle of uh, the solar system, the how the arrangements of various planets in the space. That is a that very big wonder. 
and uh, by doing research with this magnetic principle you can find the results for that uh, the uh, portion of the solar system in the space yes now you see the video magnetic field of the first conductor is audible yes sir audible sir yes Due to the changing magnetic field, a current is induced into the metal that is placed around it. These currents are known as eddy currents. Eddy current is defined as a current that is induced in a conductive metal due to a changing magnetic field in the conductor. These eddy currents flow in closed loops and its direction is perpendicular to the magnetic field. The production of eddy currents can be explained by Faraday's law of induction. Faraday's law of induction describes how an electrical conductor produces a magnetic field and how this changing magnetic field induces an electric current in the conductor around it. The metal now has developed eddy currents. Like any current carrying conductor, the metal will develop a magnetic field of its own. This distorts the magnetic field of the source responsible for their production, which results in the superimposition of the two magnetic fields. As the distance between the two metal changes, it results in a change in the magnetic field of the coil and hence the amplitude of the alternating current changes. This change in amplitude is proportional to the distance between the coils. The relation between the change of amplitude as the magnetic field changes is employed in wind turbines for continuous monitoring in its bearings. The wind turbines essentially have two main bearings on which the rotor shaft runs, a pitch bearing and a yaw bearing. These bearings need continuous monitoring for safety and cost reasons. A reduction in bearing gap would mean that the oil film has also reduced, which will lead to an increase in friction. This would lead to an increase in temperature inside the bearing. To avoid this, frequent inspections were carried out initially. But even after that, failure arose. Today, this monitoring is done by eddy current sensors that can detect the slightest change in bearing gap, thus avoiding any damage to the structure due to decrease in bearing gap. Eddy current sensors are relatively small in size and can detect the smallest change in distance. This makes them useful for measuring thickness of sheet metals in roller gaps, machine tool monitoring, final assembling of precision equipment such as disc drives. See the origin, origin may be electrical, but the application over these sensors would be uh, uh, purely uh, mechanical. The measuring thickness of the sheet metal uh, in the roller gaps and uh, uh, tool monitoring, the final assembling of the precision equipment such as uh, disc drive or the uh, application uh, in our field, uh, therefore we need to have and visit over these sensors and transducers. Of precision equipment such as disc drives. The reasons why eddy current sensors are used in important industrial processes are because they have high temperature stability, they are capable of operating at a pressure up to 4000 bars, and they are resistant to dirt and oil. However, eddy current sensors have a few drawbacks. The metal whose testing is to be done using eddy current sensor should be highly conductive in nature, and the gap between the two. And, and uh, uh, when we are uh, dealing with uh, non-conductive materials, which, which type of sensors are used? I think uh, you, you may be uh, crossed during the schooling day, schoolings and uh, uh, some sensors used to uh, uh, find the non-conductive materials and what was the name of that particular uh, sensors? In order to find the non-conductive uh, materials, what were the sensors are used? Someone, someone unmute your mic and tell me. Someone, someone. Metal should be small enough to get an accurate output. Well, that's all about AD current sensors. Stay tuned for more interesting videos. Until the next one, bye. Yes, see this video, this is for uh, the LVDT. Explain the construction and working of LVDT. LVDT. LVDT is also known as Linear Variable Differential Transducer or Transformer. It is a passive transducer which measures <coughs> displacement. It consists of a primary coil wounded on a hollow cylindrical rod and is connected to the AC source. It also consists of two secondary coils having equal number of turns and is wound and it should have the equal number of turns 
mounted on a hollow cylinder at equal distance on either side of the primary coil. The two secondary coils are connected with each other in series opposition so that the net induced EMF of the two secondary coils becomes we see that a movable soft iron core is placed inside a hollow cylinder. Position of this core with respect to the two secondary coils will affect the magnetic coupling between the primary and two secondary coils. Let's now understand how this L Sir, you are you are not audible, sir. Yes, yes. Sir, now the video is not audible, sir. Video is not audible, ah? Huh? Ah, uh, now. Video is yes. something, now it's not audible. Yes, sir. I'll, again, I'll chat. Wait. Yes, now, that sir. Equal e now, okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Yes. See, here we have primary and secondary uh, circuits and the core at center. When we are keeping the core at the center, what happens and uh, EMF gets induced in both the coils due to which the net EMF of the two secondary coils becomes zero. This position of the core is known as null position. Now, if we move the core towards the right, we see that the flux linking with coil S2 becomes greater than the flux linking with coil S1. As a result, the EMF induced in the coil S2 becomes greater than the EMF induced in coil S1. And the net EMF shows a negative value. Similarly, if we move the core towards the left, we see that the flux linking with coil S1 becomes greater than the flux linking with coil S2. As a result, EMF induced in coil S1 becomes greater than the EMF induced in coil S2. And the net EMF shows a positive value. Thus, LVDT uses the magnitude and polarity of the net EMF induced to measure the displacement of its core from the null position. Hello, Dan Rilkski here from howtomatronics.com. In this video, we will learn... And uh, this is what about uh, LVDT and we will uh, uh, discuss about these LVDT and inductive uh, capacitive pro proximity sensors and photoelectric proximity sensors during the uh, next class. And uh, yes, the, uh, now the firm is open and uh, yes. Do you have any doubts with these uh, these two uh, sensors? Do you have any doubts with uh, the photo, uh, the potentiometers and uh, uh, LVDT? I think uh, I think you don't have any other doubts with these uh, two sensors. Okay, we'll talk about these sensors during next class. Sorry, 